Hello, boys and girls, my name is Hotsusti, and welcome back to another day in Minecraft where I set myself the challenge for this series to not mine any naturally generated blocks. And this poses a challenge, for example, with these blocks, dirt. Uh, there are a lot of dirt and grass around, but not being able to mine it, it's hard to come by. And so far we did it by combining dirt with gravel to get uh, coarse dirt and then to hoe them to get the double amount of dirt back. But that's quite tedious, so today we will build a farm for it and Actually, it's a 2 by 2 tree farm, but we will not focus on the wood here, but we will uh, create stone, uh, convert that to moss and then to potzel, uh, that's where the tree farm comes in, and then we can blow up the potzel to get dirt. And this farm is designed by cubic meter so I think there are a lot of uh, components in there so uh, let's start with the first one. The first component our means to get stone is here. We have four stone generators they are three wide they push in the stone here to the middle and then we get a strip of three stone pushed up here and three stone up there. And uh, that will then, basically we will have a strip of uh, three on this side, three on this side and here in this two wide gap in the middle, we will have the tree grown that will convert the moss to potzel. So I think the next step is to build this up a bit further. Uh, there is a bit of uh, redstone wiring going uh, up. As you can already see here, we have uh, this node block um, observer line actually going down uh, to trigger the next generation of stone when it is needed. So we will build this up a bit more and then have the conversion system to moss in place. Phew! That has been one of the most intense block placing I've done in a while. And from up here, it does not look like much. But what you can see is there is a lot of rail, there are observers, there are pistons. And if we uh, have a sneak peek uh, down here, somewhere, You can see it's not just the, the top layer, but it goes down and down with rails and observers and uh, whatnot. So it's it's very a uh, compact design, uh, but you also have to be careful uh, how you place the blocks. But here we are now on our main level here where we have the three wide uh, stone slices that will be turned to moss first and then to potzel. And the moss conversion happens through here in the middle. We have one for this side, then here one for that side, then the same here and there, and of course, over on that side as well. So that should ensure that basically the whole stone, 
that we have here on top can be converted to moss and only then uh, that can be converted to potso. And then here on the side we have water streams to flush off all the drops that we get from the crushed leaves. Uh, and we need to bring that uh, back up to the, to the player to uh, resupply him with the saplings. And uh, that's what will come next. Then here on the side we have two, two bubble columns that go up which are still missing the water because they are going still higher. And then of course we have uh, various uh, supplies for uh, for the dispensers here uh, where we need to fill in the bone meal. So that's also part of the whole system. And then all these uh, drop lines, they need to be powered. Otherwise items will get stuck in there. So I think the next thing here is just a bit of, uh, of the, the bottom layer here because everything that goes further up, that's then basically just the tree form um, with, the, with the leaf crushers. So let's get this next step going. A few more layers are in and this is basically the essential part. Here in the middle we will grow the 2x2 uh, two two spruce trees and we will have a boat sitting here partially in this block uh, with this piston back there uh, moving the player left and right so uh, the saplings can be planted on both blocks and then here we will push out the locks and I probably have to place in the locks uh, prematurely uh, so the farm does not break. Then here we have the bone mill system that goes uh, back to here uh, Heading the bone meal from back down there. And then we basically have these flying machines that will crush the leaves. And because flying machines, it's a bit uh, slower than the average leaf crusher that we have around there and there. So, yeah, and then we have these uh, dispensers on the side, which are powered by these ones, uh, these observers. Uh, and I think those are for sending the, the flying machine back. Because if we have a look uh, at where this dispenser sits, uh, that aligns nicely with this observer here. And we do not have anything in the dispensers. So it's, it's just powered and that will be detected by the piston. So all that remains is basically build this uh, up to, uh, to full height. And then the last thing we have to deal with is uh, here on this side, we get a mix of wood out. We might get a, a bit of uh, remaining stone that was not converted to moss. Um, hopefully a lot of pots and we might have the occasional uh, moss block in there. So we all need to deal with, with that and uh, move it off uh, to where we can uh, explode it. 
and as with uh, MOS generation, um, uh, not only the stone is converted, but stuff can grow on top like uh, uh, carpets, azalea, grass and so on. So what we have below here is a layer of piston, sticky pistons, which will basically lift the, the floor up and down, breaking everything. And then from uh, these dispensers back there, we have water buckets in there, which will flush everything here to the middle. Um, so we can deal with that. And then this barrel here, that's basically the on off switch where we store the uh, saplings to plant some more trees. So I guess I will build up uh, into the sky and then we will have another look at it uh, before dealing with the output of this farm. This was a bit of a repetitive task, but now all the layers are in and I have to remember uh, back here and on the other side we have two water cones that are missing the water and um, basically the flying machines are set off by said water column so I have to make sure that uh, when I fill in the water and make it bubbly uh, the fly machines stay put otherwise we might have a bit of a disaster and as you can see up there there are still a few things uh, more missing on top there but basically what we have there at the top we have an uh, observer going in and that basically then triggers um, uh, this line of vertical observers uh, by flipping that trapdoor, changing the state of the walls there, which is then detected. And basically this observer here detects the arrival of the flying machine. So all should be good. So I think I will put off the um, pushing out of the goods for next time because we also have to come up with a way to destroy the whole thing. In the original design uh, we get just one block stream that can then be fed into a blast chamber um, and seeing that we don't have a blast chamber and maybe at some point we will have but for now we uh, I think we shall have something in this area uh, water basin for collection and then TNT duplication and probably we have to arrange the, the blocks in a more efficient way so that we do not uh, blow up block by block but have a bit more uh, to go uh, but uh, I will finish the thing there on top uh, so uh, uh, we can call that part done the top side is now also complete as well as the water columns, the bubble columns left and right. And in order to get those in, I had to place some furnaces uh, all the way up because furnaces are immovable blocks. So the flying machines do not go anywhere while placing water in or converting it to uh, source blocks. And all this 
should work, but we cannot yet test it, especially not in the rain. So that will have to wait for next episode when we will also deal with the uh, output, those two strips of uh, stone and uh, lock coming out there, they need to be harvested in some manner. So once again, big thanks to Cubic Meter for the farm design and uh, I will see you in the next one. So until then, goodbye.